you, Lorraine. Yeah, this is, uh, I received a call from Claudia just a couple of days ago asking me to speak a little bit about the Kennywood plan, so I've been doing a little cramming over the last few days to get, to get ready for this. The, uh, the countywide plan uh, that is now being uh, processed through the county is it's, it is going to be an entirely online uh, web-based plan. This is something that's rather unusual. I'm kind of surprised with the county, which uh, I don't think is necessarily a very forward, particularly forward-thinking institution, but the fact that they're taking this on, I think it is our... It seems like a good idea, and I like the idea of it all being online and web-based. It's been kind of excruciating dealing with the county through this whole process to try and understand the whole process that we're going through. Uh, one of the things that, uh, in, in reviewing it online, the, the lexicon is something that I found I had to uh, had to sort of educate myself on. I know many of uh, you people that are SQL people and your presenters you've had here this morning are much more familiar with this than, uh, than I am. So that's been something I've really had to dive into is to learn the lexicon on things. The, uh, the probably uh, some of the, the biggest issues that, well, I should say the environmental uh, impact, uh, draft environmental impact uh, report for the countywide plan. The comments were, uh, acceptance of comments for that was closed on August 15th. So now the county has it all in the works, and we had understood, and their timeline had said that by about now they would be publishing the final environmental, uh, the final countywide plan. So we're really waiting to see what's happening on that. And I have a sense that perhaps, hopefully, because they are taking some of our comments that have been made seriously, they're now in the process of revising the plan to, to, uh, to incorporate those, those, uh, those comments. One of the biggest issues with this countywide plan is that all of the community plans that had been prepared and incorporated and adopted by the county have now been, they're going to be abandoned. They're going to be abandoned and it's going to be replaced by community action plans. And those are plans that are going to be depending on individuals within the community to do a lot of the legwork to sort of protect and guide the, guide the community. <coughs> There were a series of workshops early on in the countywide plan process where community members were uh, brought together to explain uh, and identify their, their goals and aspirations and then, uh, 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 and then <coughs> utilize those as the basis for uh, creating and, and controlling what's happening in the communities. Um, as part of this, they, the county has now adopted a process of assigning champions, as it were, to, to advocate for a particular community. So, uh, for instance, in, uh, in Joshua Tree, there are, certain, there are certain action statements that are then associated with a particular organization. So I see Susie Boyd here at the Land Trust, and I wanted to make sure she was aware of the fact that the Land Trust is going to be the organization that might be partnering to conserve natural desert habitats and wildlife corridors and to protect native plants and animals. So, so the Land Trust is going to be the lead champion on, doing, uh, on advocating for that. Uh, it, I, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little hesitant with the county in, in terms of are they really going to accept the input from these various champions? And, and I chose this one in particular in that they are uh, they are advocating to uh, the, the county is looking to put together. They're saying this champion is going to put together a a plan for conserving. Uh, uh, plants, plants and wildlife, and the environment. 
and they'll then accept that. They put in an estimate, it's going to cost about $5,000 to do something like that. <laughs> this, in spite of the fact that this is the Morongo Basin Conservation Priorities Report, which was prepared, what, about uh, 2012, so seven years ago, it costs, you know, maybe a hundred times that. And uh, we have been unable to get the county to accept the maps and information that was created as part of the preparation of this report. So it's, it's a little frustrating, and we're really kind of skeptical that utilizing this community action plan process is going to provide the level of protection to the communities that, that we really feel should be, should be assured. Uh, so this is happening, and there's a whole, so they've, they've identified through these workshops, or perhaps just through an internet search, the county planners, or uh, perhaps the people that have put together the county plan, it seems like they may have just gone on the internet and found various organizations within certain communities and said, oh, well, here's somebody that's in Pioneer, like the American Food Bank up at Pioneer Town. What? You know? So you wonder with these, all these champions, if they're even aware at all of the fact that they're being tasked with some of these major responsibilities. I know Chuck Bell and, and Levita, I'm sure he's, uh, he's shaking his head. You know, they've, they've been assigned uh, uh, the task of uh, protecting the Lucerne Valley area. So it's, uh, it's something that's we're really unsure about that. There's been a lot of pushback, and a lot of the comments written to the county have objected to this process of abandoning the community plans in favor of these community action plans. Uh, there are Another element within the countywide plan that's really, really concerning is there is a new land use designation throughout the county, Resource Land Management, RLM. And within this land use designation, the, uh, an acceptable use is uh, industrial scale renewable energy projects. And this really seems to be, we, we felt so good about the passage of the Renewable Energy Conservation Element, Section 4.10, which banned industrial scale renewable projects within community-wide plans and within RL zones. However, with this RL, uh, RLM uh, uh, land use, we could find RL uh, uh, lands surrounded by industrial scale, and that would be a permissible type of use. So it's something that uh, there have been quite a few people that have made objections to the county about that. And we'll see. This, these were comments that were made in response to the environmental impact, draft environmental impact report. The, one of the concerns, back to this idea of the community action plans, is the county took the approach that there are so many uh, uh, different policies that are spread throughout the countywide plan is they have, were hoping they were integrated within the community plans and within the general plan as a whole. So they are looking to kind of consolidate all of these policies into a much more refined number of, of policies. So they have taken the, the, the approach of taking each of the community plans and then providing a matrix that shows for instance, this is the one for Joshua Tree that would talk about, uh, let's see, for instance, let's see, preserve open space to ensure that the rural desert character and scenic vistas of the community are maintained. This was in the community plan. And so they've now uh, uh, shown the policy within the countywide plan of a uh, natural resources number three, open space parks and recreation, a system of well planned and maintained parks, trails, and open space. Uh, that would cover that element of the particular plan, uh, of the, of the uh, community plan. Uh, in, in hearing this morning, some of the people talking about how we really can't count on the county to 
really necessarily hold the line in terms of hold the line in terms of their uh, uh, translating these policies onto a community plan basis. This gives them a lot of they're going to have a lot of leeway to make decisions just to do whatever they want to do. So it's really a it, we're very concerned about that. Uh, the uh, so we're hoping that the county is going to have this uh, EIR uh, their comments on this done pretty soon. One thing I know Pat Flanagan has been working very much with the people out in uh, Daggett and uh, 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 up in the Daggett area where a large renewable energy, the Daggett Solar by Clearway Energy, was recently approved by the Planning Commission. And we're very concerned. We, the NBCA, uh, through the leadership of Pat, Flanagan has really helped us put together an argument which we made at the Planning Commission saying that this is an environmental justice issue and that the planning, uh, that the uh, approval by the Planning Department of the, uh, uh, and certification by the Planning Commission of the EIR did not take that into effect. Subsequently, the, uh, the county has received a letter from the State Attorney General, uh, Xavier Becerra, saying that the county really needs to pay attention to environmental justice, to be in compliance with SB 1000. And, and they say here, we submit this comment letter to urge the county to strengthen the plan to revise the environmental analysis prior to submitting it to the San Bernardino County Board of Supervisors for consideration saying that low-income communities of color often are a disproportionate burden of pollution and associated health risks. And this is exactly what we would be dealing with up in Newberry Springs. So it's, uh, it, it's an ongoing process, and as I said, it's, been, it's typical. I spent a good deal of time over the last few days studying the county's website. It's impressive, the amount of maps and the amount of information on there. But it's very dense. It's very dense. You really got to dive into it. It's it's not. It may be web based, but it required a great deal of energy to really stay on top of it. Um, I wanted to also the other thing that occurred to me <coughs> is the existing general plan is dated 2007. So here we are, 2019, 12 years. We all know. And we've all heard what has got to happen in 12 years in regards to our climate and the planet. It's, it's really, see how quickly things go. We've really got to get to work and start making some, some, uh, some major changes in order to get that to happen. Uh, we have to address this. We've got to get off fossil fuels as quickly as possible. So we have a very small window of time. And I was concerned in looking at the environmental impact uh, report for the countywide plan that except in the greenhouse gas emissions component of the CEQA uh, and within the analysis there really was very very little mention of climate change and, and its effects and it really seems to me that that's we've got to start looking at this much more broadly and hopefully the county will come back and Hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but, uh, and I wanted to just also take this uh, opportunity to say that next uh, Tuesday, November 5th, the Riverside County Planning, uh, Riverside County Board of Supervisors is going to be hearing the Paradise Valley case. And the Planning Commission, has, in a very rare case, they denied that application. So I'm hoping, and we've got a few people that are going to go, I encourage anyone that can to make it, to go to Riverside and put on a show saying, let's, uh, let's stop this. Uh, one other thing I meant to mention in terms of the countywide plan, and that has to do with scenic highways. Uh, Sarah Kennington has been working with Sarah Fairchild, landscape architect, and they have put together an application to designate State Highway 247 as a scenic highway. They just finished the report over the last uh, week, and uh, it's, uh, 
it, it, uh, we're hopeful that we can get this, uh, get that designation assigned to that. But it's been a, a heck of a project. They've done a really good job working with Chuck Bell and uh, many of the people in the Homestead Valley communities. But uh, so just a brief update on the Plan. It's the beat goes on. <laughs>